What's up, everyone? If you have followed my content at all, you will know that I am a huge fan of Netlify for hosting as well as serverless functions. In this video, I wanna talk about your Netlify serverless functions and how to run them locally with a command called Netlify Dev. So that's what we're gonna talk about and I'll see you there. All right, so first off, I wanna mention that this video is sponsored by Scrimba and specifically their front-end developer career path. I created a video about this a couple of weeks ago but this is a full path for you to follow to become a web developer. I spent a lot of time going through YouTube videos and little one-off courses. This puts all of that stuff together so that you can be on your path to becoming a full web developer. So for $25 a month, this is a special that ends at the end of July. So you've got a little bit of time left to sign up. You've got 75 hours of content with lots of challenges and some really amazing instructors and different courses that are in here. I wanna scroll you down to uh, the section on what you'll build, Pac-Man, a joke generator, a Netflix clone, some really cool apps. And then you're going to have some amazing teachers that you have probably seen before. Cassidy Williams, Kevin Powell, Bob Zero, Gary Simon, and myself is one of them. And then a couple of more, Anya and uh, Dylan Israel and Carl and Jesse Hall. So a lot of these people are top-notch creators. I definitely recommend checking out the curriculum and seeing if it makes sense for you to get on your path to becoming a front-end web developer. So all of that said, what we're here to talk about is again, a command called Netlify Dev. So let's start with just Netlify in general. Netlify is uh, first and foremost, a hosting platform for static sites. Netlify is really active in the Jamstack ecosystem. And with these static sites, basically what you do is you take your files from your site and you usually go through a build process in React or something. And you take those files and you upload them to Netlify or you connect Netlify to your GitHub repository with your source code and then have it do a build and then host the static assets for your site. It's super fast. It uh, is a CDN, a content delivery network. Things get replicated all across the world. It's the easiest way to host a static site, hands down. In addition to that, a lot of the concern that people have with the idea of the Jamstack is how do you add that backend functionality well, this is where uh, Netlify serverless functions comes in. And they are, in my opinion, the easiest way to get started with Net with serverless functions is Netlify functions. Now, I do want to let you know, if you're interested in what we covered today in terms of Netlify and how to set all this stuff up on learn.jamesqquick.com, you can find a bunch of different resources that I've created, including the Netlify functions cheat sheet. This will give you kind of a one pager, two pager, of the things that we talked about today so that you can go and set this stuff up yourself. Highly recommend checking that out. So with Netlify functions, what happens is, I'll show you, I've got a project created here that is deployed in Netlify. It has a section here for functions and you can see that I've got a couple of different functions that are hosted by Netlify. And this is all just from having files inside of my repository. So I wanna show you what this app is. It's a course tracker, and this is all just dummy data here, but I could add a new course and say www.jamesqquick.com James something. Um, anyway, and then I save this thing and it comes up in uh, one of these sections down here. I think it's this one. Um, anyway, so all of this information is stored in Airtable. It's a React application on the front end and then the middle layer of Airtable and React is serverless functions. And again, this is the easiest way to get started with serverless functions is through Netlify. I love them. If you're interested in how to build this app in a week or two from now, when I'm recording this and when I release this, uh, there will be a video explaining this and then I will add a link to that video up here when it is ready. So let me look at, uh, let's look at the source code for this. Uh, inside of my functions directory, I've got a bunch of different files, which I should probably move around a bit, but the main one is I've got a courses file function where I detect which method the user is calling, get, post, put, delete, and then I call the appropriate function to handle that incoming message. Now, this is not a course on serverless functions. I'm just kind of showing you what's here, and then I'll show you how I run these so that I can do everything together. So. This, uh, if I actually, well, I guess um, this is basically your backend, right? Like these are the serverless functions. In Netlify, all you have to do is add a functions directory. It actually could be titled anything you want. Typically, people call it functions. 
And then you need a configuration file, a netlify.toml file that does two things. It specifies where your functions are. So this is saying my functions live in which directory just so happens to be called functions as well. So that's where they live. And then for a little bit of a convenience, I've added this redirect where instead of having to type out the full de default path of localhost, blah, 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 dot netlify slash function slash, and then the name of the file, that's where the name comes from, from the endpoint is the name of the file. Uh, I did a redirect so I could do slash API slash star. So slash API slash, and then the name of the file. So this is the configuration that you most likely want to have. When you have that in place, you will want to make sure that you have npm install dash g the netlify cli installed so this is the package that we're going to use to be able to run this site locally so this netlify cli i had an issue with this the other day where make sure that you have a version greater than 2.50 so i think what i'll get is like 2.58 or something make sure you have 2.5 something greater than 2.50 to make sure this will work but when that thing is installed and yet this is 2.58. What we'll have access to is the Netlify dev command. Now keep in mind, this source code is a React project. So all of um, all the stuff is React except for the functions directory, which will be our function. If you want access to this, to the source code, you wanna get a look at that early before the video comes out, uh, you can grab this on my GitHub uh, and it is build a Jamstack course tracker with React serverless and Airtable. So you can go and grab this source code as well, just to take a look. So when I run this Netlify dev, what Netlify dev does is it looks for, or it knows about common different types of uh, applications that you might be running. In this case, it recognizes that I have a React project. It can recognize Vue and Next and Gatsby and Nux probably and all these different things. And what it does is it takes the functions for the serverless functions and it runs those and then it takes the front end and it runs that and typically those run on different ports so react by default runs on 3000 i think the serverless functions by default uh here it's 60109 that's probably just a random port but they can't necessarily talk to each other because they're on different ports what netlify dev does is it goes ahead and sets up that proxy so that now for my front end, and if we look at, uh, let's look at one of these components, the course form, for example, you can see all I do is make a relative path call to slash API slash courses. Now, the reason I'm able to do slash API is because of this redirect, right? Otherwise I would have to do dot Netlify slash functions. And since this is just a relative path, Netlify dev takes care of the proxying from the front end to your serverless functions. And now if we look at this on local host 8888 you can see that we've got uh, this running and if you notice that th that data loaded uh, let's actually refresh so I can show you this call it's making a call to local host let's look at this uh, 888 API slash courses and Netlify dev takes care of the redirect uh, behind the scenes which is absolutely incredible so by running Netlify dev it can run your local project your front end and your serverless functions and let them talk together just as if they were deployed now after you deploy this by uh, just connecting netlify to or creating a site and connecting it to a github repo so you could clone that repo and you could connect your own site to it inside of functions again netlify recognizes where your functions directory is and it adds a function for each one of these and technically i should move these around because the only one that's actually a function or like a serverless function is courses.js but that's besides the point. So uh, let's look in one more thing I wanna show you is if I look in my deploys, not in my deploys, my deploy settings, there's a setting in here for environment variables that I didn't want you to see, I'm gonna have to edit that out. But uh, in my environment variables, I've got things like my API key for Airtable. Now, when I run this locally, I have a .env file that includes those variables and then I use them inside of my application. So inside of my serverless functions, if you look at uh, the Airtable configuration, I'm using process.env.airtable API key. So while running locally, I have to uh, add the environment variables and configure them myself. But if we do a Netlify link, so with the Netlify CLI, you can run Netlify link and this will uh, go out and look in Netlify. You have to log in first. So you have to go through a login process in Netlify. After you do run Netlify link, you can uh, choose to connect your local site to the site out in Netlify. 
And so I'm going to do that based on the Git remote origin. So um, the site in Netlify is connected to the Git repo that I am working on locally. So I can connect it that way. And it's looking for a site and it says it's linked. What it does is it creates this .netlify directory. Included in it is a state.json and it has a site ID, a unique identifier for that site. So what's really crazy is if I had gotten rid of that .env file, which I won't do for now, but when I run Netlify dev again, you'll see Netlify dev will actually grab the environment variables from, I'll have to let it load and then kind of scroll back up, but it's going to grab those environment variables from Netlify dashboard and inject them into me running this application locally. Now, then it follows up and overrides it with things that are in my .env file. But I could, again, I could get rid of the .env file. I could get rid of the .env package and I could just run Netlify dev to run all of this stuff together, let it talk to each other, and then pull the environment variables from the Netlify dashboard. Uh, this is all so sweet. This is the coolest, easiest way, most fun way to get started with Netlify functions to build a full stack Jamstack application. And I did want to share uh, one other thing. Recently, I created a Jamstack crash course. I guess I'll have to skip ads on my own video. You think like if it's your own video, you could kind of skip it. But um, so inside of this Jamstack crash course, another video you should check out, um, you can learn how to put all of this stuff together. Netlify serverless functions, Netlify hosting. You see that I'm on that page to start and uh, React and everything that you need to create a full stack application. So go check out that video. I will also have a link to the coming video for the build a Jamstack course tracker with React serverless and Airtable. You got lots of different resources that you can check out whenever you are ready. So that's gonna wrap it up for this video. I'm curious how many of you out there are already using Netlify, maybe for hosting or specifically for serverless functions, and how many people are using that Netlify dev command to run locally? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you and share any cool projects that you're working on so I can go and see them as well. Thanks for checking out the video and I will catch you in the next one.